Hey guys, another month has gone by. Welcome to the pickups video for May of 2018. So the idea is that we will have a look at all the items that we bought in May, but also stuff that companies sent us and a few generous donations from you guys. I will spend a bit of time talking about each part. Some of these items have already been reviewed, so there will be a link down below in the description or a card will appear on the top right hand side of the screen. The very first item is a Socket A processor. So this is the AMD Geode NX1500. Now, we did a video recently on the next model up, the NX1750. I will put a link down below in the description and also a card top right hand side of the screen. Bit of a story to get this processor. I originally bought two back in May from eBay Germany, but Australia Post, uh, they stuffed up. They handed the package to the wrong person. Um, and it took quite a bit of back and forth to get my money back. Uh, in the end, I put in an investigation with Australia Post and they confirmed everything. It was signed under a different name and at a time when I was at work. So it was, after that, it was quite straightforward. And I got the money back from uh, PayPal. So PayPal paid me the refund, not the seller. So no one really uh, lost any money. The money basically came out of the pocket from PayPal. What is interesting about this processor is the extremely low power draw. It has a TDP of only 9 watts and runs off a voltage of only 1.1 volts, but the motherboard needs to support it. And I've got an ASRock motherboard with an SIS chipset, which officially supports this processor. I've already done this, uh, the benchmarks, um, so there will be a video in the near future. Blitzwolf sent us two items. The first one are some headphones or earbuds or earphones. And very nice packaging comes in a little pouch. So let's have a quick look what's inside. So we have the headphones here and you also get uh, three different sizes to make them fit better to your ears. The connector is a TRS. So not only are these headphones, but it also has a built-in microphone so you can answer calls. It comes with a little controller on the cable. You can control the volume up and down, and there's also a pause and play button. The headphone drivers are made out of graphene. I do like that they fit very comfortable. I also like the sound. It's very neutral, not too bass heavy. You're looking at 15 US dollars, and there are some links down below in the description. And the next item is a power bank. This is the Blitzwolf BWP5. You're looking at around 32 US dollars, including free shipping. And there are also links down below in the description. Here we have all the technical specifications. It has a huge capacity of 15,600 milliampere hours. And it is also compatible with the Quick Charge 3.0 standard. Here's the other side of the unit. We have two USB ports, so you can power two devices. This is the input to charge the power bank. Here's the power button. And here are LEDs that show you how much charge the bank has. So, so there's not much more really to talk about. It's very straightforward to use. It has a massive capacity. It is a little bit bulkier and heavier, so it's not something you can put in your pocket, but definitely in a bag when you're out and about. I've been using it for around a week or so. It worked without any issues, so definitely a product I can recommend to you guys. And we got a PayPal donation from Nick. Thank you very much. He donated $40 to our channel. This will come in very handy. If any one of you wants to donate through PayPal, there's a link down below in the description. And here we have a graphics card from Gigabyte. This is a GDX 750. Now this comes from China from AliExpress. On Twitter, another YouTube channel, Ostalks Hardware, he posted some information about cheap video cards on AliExpress and these are actually legit. They're not fake, these are the real deal. He bought uh, two cards. He bought an Asus GDX 750 with a gig of video RAM and then he bought also the 750 Ti with two gigabytes of VRAM. He has already published a video and basically these are great alternatives uh, to the NVIDIA GD 1030 for example. They are cheaper and they will outperform the 1030. Now I bought uh, one of these as well and I also bought the Gigabyte 750 Ti with 2 gig of video RAM. It hasn't arrived yet. I'm interested for Windows XP Retro Gaming so I think that will be a good uh, video for you guys for our channel and I 
decided between getting the Asus or the Gigabyte. I went with the Gigabyte because I like the uh, configuration with the outputs more. It has two DVIs and two HDMIs, whereas the Asus had, I believe it had a DVI, uh, a VGA, and an HDMI. I, I do prefer that configuration a little bit more. Uh, the Asus card doesn't require a six pin connector, whereas this one does but uh, it's still fairly energy efficient, around 75 watts or so. So these are very energy efficient video cards, but have a ton of performance, and we will find out soon um, how they compare under Windows XP to some other uh, cheap retro video cards. Now, uh, if there is anything uh, particular you wanna know about these cards, do let me know. That will make it a little bit easier to uh, show the kind of stuff that you're interested in in future videos. And here we have two socket 370 CPUs, both via C3. The one on the left clocked at 866 megahertz. I bought that one myself, comes from the US. And the second one was a donation uh, from a Twitter user, goes under the name of Escape uh, Velo. Unfortunately, his account got suspended. So um, thank you for sending us this processor. It got forwarded through Jack. So he also received uh, one of these processors and then he sent me the other one. So that's awesome. Really looking forward to trying these out. Never used one of them. Um, in combination with the set mal utility, we, you should be able to control the multipliers, slow the processes down. And that's what I wanna look at. How slow can you get these? Um, are they um, good for MS-DOS gaming? That's really what I'm looking at. These are not fast. Um, a similar clocked Intel or AMD processor will outperform them, but slow is good. So that's what I wanna look at. And also with the set mal utility, you might be able to tweak some of the uh, CPU uh, features. And yeah, we will basically find out if these are suitable to build a DOS retro gaming PC. And I got some USB wireless adapters. If you've been following me on Twitter, you might have seen the message that I've got better internet now. Uh, NBN, the National Broadband Network, it's an Australian infrastructure project and I'm using the fiber to the node technology. Bit of a lottery, but I got lucky. I've got really good internet now and the wireless um, is holding back my internet now. So I had a look at wireless dual band. These are Windows XP compatible and the ones with the uh, antenna, they cost a little bit more, but they, yep, surprise, surprise, they actually work a little bit better. And I'm thinking of doing uh, a video that might interest you, especially networking under Windows XP with uh, retro computers, um, getting one of these adapters, they're really nice and cheap and saves you from having to run ethernet uh, across your house. So yeah, let me know if that's something uh, that you might wanna see on the channel. And uh, I've got a few other ones with wireless N for comparison, and maybe we can make a video around, uh, yeah, wireless USB adapters that work under Windows XP. And here we have a workstation video card. This is a AGP graphics card. It's an ATI Fire GL T2 with 64 megabytes of RAM. And it's a version, an OEM version for Hewlett Packard, I believe. Now, this is the workstation equivalent of the Radeon 9600, I believe. And it does come with an interesting connector, not the usual DVI. I think this is called a DMS-60 uh, connector, lots of pins. And I had to get a breakout cable, uh, looks like that. Um, they are not that cheap, but I was lucky. I found something from Germany and I bundled it with another uh, purchase so it didn't cost me too much. And I've quickly turned it on, it's, te uh, it's working, but I haven't done any benchmarking under Windows 98 yet, so this is a this is Windows 98 compatible, and that's pretty much where I see this card uh, be quite good value, uh, especially with the low uh, prof, uh, profile factor that might be interesting. Uh, in, yeah, might be of interest to some of you. And yes, that's definitely a video I want to make. We have been looking at uh, quad row cards uh, in some previous videos, but we haven't done much with the with FireGL. I've done one video on a FireGL yet, but there are a lot more. So that's something I will definitely want to look into. And here we have a motherboard. Now this is very special. I actually purchased three of them. These are brand new. You can buy them at Newegg from the US. The postage to Australia uh, was obscene, but look, this is a motherboard. Um, if you look uh, in, in forums like Vogons and other uh, forums, a lot of people use them and recommend them. And what's cool about these is these are retro friendly, but support uh, more modern features. So we've got a Intel 865 chipset 
with an HEP interface, but socket 775. And this, and in terms of processors, you can stick in old Pentium 4s, but also Extreme Editions and Pentium uh, Dual Core, but also Core 2 Duo and Core 2 Quad even. Now, having had a look at the CPU uh, supported list, the official support for the front bus is 800 megahertz. Uh, it does support uh, 1066 FSB processors, but only through overclocking. So that's something I will uh, definitely want to have a look at. Um, I've been reading a few uh, yeah, forum entries and, 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 and uh, customer feedback um, on, on Newegg and other websites that uh, processors with an 800 megahertz FSB, uh, that's where, the pro uh, where this motherboard is really stable with other processors, it might be a bit flaky, so that's something I wanna, look at, I wanna have a look at. But basically, if you wanna build a machine that really uh, can stretch the legs of an HP video card uh, and combine old with new, uh, there are not many motherboards like this. So this, uh, although it costs quite a, a bit to import it to Australia, this is one of these boards, eventually they will be sold out and then people will be scrambling for one and the prices will just go through the roof and I can see this motherboard easily costing $100, $150 in a few years. So now is the time to, yep, <laughs> to just stock up on these. And um, yeah, I will definitely, I'm looking forward to really using one of these. I'm not sure when, because I've got my hands full with some other projects, especially to do with the Intel versus AMD season two series, which we've started just recently, but yeah. Do let me know if you have one of these boards or you have heard about it, uh, share your experiences. Um, they're, they're really awesome and I can't wait to use one of these. And I bought two of these CPUs. It's the Pentium Dual Core, the E5800, running at 3.2 gigahertz. And they've got a front side bus of 800 megahertz. So they're perfect for that ASRock motherboard we just looked at. And because of the 800 megahertz FSB, they're fully supported. The chipset is not getting overclocked. So um, I think these are a good match for those motherboards. Now, recently, a HP small form factor workstation, the Z220, got donated to our channel. And I wanted to upgrade it. So I got a few more uh, gadgets, a USB card reader, and also two 92 millimeter fans. These are from Fractal Design. And I also got a 5 and a quarter inch drive bay. I might just show you uh, what I'm talking about. So here we've got the Z220 workstation. I have it standing upright like this. I put some uh, feet on the bottom. You can get these at the supermarket. And this is the drive bay I was talking about. So I've got an SSD here for Windows and all my applications and for my video editing. And here I've got a two terabyte hard drive. I use that for backups. Um, I believe it's called file history in Windows 10. It just automatically uh, keeps uh, backups in the background if anything fails. Here we've got the uh, card reader. So that's a USB 2.0. The machine has two USB 2.0 headers on the motherboard. So that was easy to connect. And also uh, two USB 3.0 front uh, ports because the this machine only has USB 2.0 at the front. So that was important to me because I often uh, plug in a USB 3.0 hard drive and it makes a big difference in terms of transfer rate. And here we have the insides of the machine. I've upgraded the RAM. We've got 16 gigabytes of RAM now. Here is the uh, PCI Express USB 3.0 controller with the cable going to the drive bay. Also, we have two USB 3.0 ports at the back and the other modifications I did had to do with the cooling, specifically the noise. The front cooling fan was fine, but I still replaced it. So I bought two of these uh, Fractal Design uh, 92 millimeter fans. They are fixed at, I believe, 16, 1500 RPM. So that's a good noise level for me. I prefer fixed fans rather than temperature controlled ones. So the, uh, the ticking noise is gone. So the fan in the power supply made a ticking noise. The one in the front was fine. The one in the front is really easy to replace. Uh, you just pull everything out and put in a new fan. The connector is three pin. The motherboard connector is four pin, but that's not a worry. You just, yeah, you just force it. You have to force it in a little bit. The fan on the power supply, that's a bit dodgy. I don't recommend <laughs> you guys do that unless you are comfortable and you know a little bit about electronics. 
Um, there are capacitors in here that do carry 220 volts, so you got to be very careful. Um, and yeah, you lose the warranty and all of that. So, but if you still want to do it, once again, the fan is uh, has a connector, so it's really easy to just unplug and plug in the new fan. And both fans now spin at 1500 RPM. Um, so the ticking noise is gone. It's a constant fan noise and no ticking, just like a, a normal, um, yeah, blowing air sound and really happy with the result, um, how this turned out. So yeah, those are the upgrades I did to this machine and maybe that's something that interests you and maybe this gets so excited about cheap, small form factor machines that you can buy on eBay. I think the value is amazing. Um, the only limitation is with the video card, uh, GDX 1050 Ti is the best you can do, but uh, that's still a quite capable video card. And when you have a small form factor machine, you need low profile video cards. This is the Radeon HD 8490, I believe it's a Dell uh, OEM model. And I've been working on a fairly uh, big video, basically a roundup uh, benchmarking session of low profile video cards for Windows XP retro gaming because you can pick up one of these cheap Dell Optiplex or HP Elite small form factor machines for very little money and you don't need to go for a top model if you want to play uh, for Windows XP. A machine with a socket 775 or uh, 1150 is perfect for that. 1150 is already an overkill. I'm going to benchmark these video cards with an i5-2400, but a Core 2 uh, Duo, for example, uh, 8600 or something like that, uh, is just as good for Windows XP Retro Gaming. So that's a video I'm almost done with all the benchmarks. Uh, just got to put together all the charts. And yeah, so that's something also you can expect in the near future. And we will have a look at some high-end video cards as well, featuring the GDX 750 from NVIDIA, but also from Radeon. We have quite a few Radeon cards at the high-end. I think the fastest low-profile video card from uh, ATI is the 7750, although there are not too many models out there. And I wasn't able to find a cheap low-profile version, so I just used the PCI uh, riser cable and my uh, kitchen chopping board. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will link a video down below in the description that shows you what I'm talking about. And here we have a bunch of PCI video cards, mostly for DOS retro gaming. So let's have a look at the models that we have here. So this is the first video card. I haven't been able to test any of these, so I'm not sure uh, about the amount of video memory. This one has a chipset from Cirrus Logic. It's the GD5464. The actual video card uh, is from Cornerstone Imaging uh, 1996, and it's called the XL3 or Accelerator 3 maybe. Um, yeah, now Cirrus Logic, a very good value, bit of um, uh, under, yeah, underrated video card. Everyone chases, chases cards from uh, Zeng or S3 or other brands, and Cirrus Logic was always very good value. Very good performance, good compatibility, and also cheap, but uh, not for long. Again, this is a, uh, a model, um, a chipset, or a brand that uh, people are becoming uh, aware of. So, yeah, give it a few years, and people will highly regard Serious Logic video cards as well, just like all the other brands. So, again, now's the time to get in and get uh, a few of these cheap video cards. This graphics card is from Diamond Multimedia 1994 from the USA and the model number is it's a Stealth 64 DRAM TPCI and always when you're shopping for a video card and it has sockets try to pick one that has the memory modules uh, installed um, because very often these uh, modules on their own can cost quite a bit and often it's better to pay a little bit more to get a video card with the uh, memory modules already upgraded. This has a chipset from S3, it's a uh, classic tri Trio 64, uh, a very awesome DOS video card, super performance, highly compatible. S3 is one of the uh, top video cards you can go for in terms of DOS gaming. Again, haven't tested it, but I've got no doubts that these cards work. Usually with these old PCI video cards, uh, I don't recall uh, failures, to be honest. Uh, it's more the later uh, AGP and PCI Express stuff that seems to be more error-prone. We also have a BIOS chip here. 
um, version 2.02. .02. Yep, just if anyone's interested or uh, has a similar card with maybe a newer BIOS version, yeah, just drop me a line down below in the comments. Um, that would, yep, yeah, that interests me and definitely something I'd love to know. And here we have another video card with a chipset from Cirrus Logic. This one is a little bit more modern. It's from 1996 from STB System. We've got the BIOS chip here, a Nitro 64V and the chipset, let's have a look. So this one is a Cirrus Logic GD5446. And in terms of VRAM, I'm pretty sure it's either got two or four megabytes, something like that. But yep, another card I haven't tested yet, but looking forward to seeing what this card can do. And a border SSD, this is a Western Digital Green. Uh, eBay Australia, we often have coupons and various companies um, seem to have a promotion running. And this company had a 20% off coupon, so it cost uh, around 70 Australian dollars, including postage. And that was a good price. And the idea is that this will go in my main desktop uh, computer where I do my video editing. It currently has a 500 gig uh, Crucial MX100, I believe. And that 500 gig SSD will go into my capture computer in uh, the computer lab and uh, replacing the two terabyte uh, SSHD Seagate drive, which just feels a bit sluggish. And also um, it, it makes a bit of noise. So when I do some voice recording, um, yeah, I do like SSDs for the speed, but also because they're nice and quiet. On the Vogons forums, I saw a thread discussing these small eight inch LCD monitors that you can buy from various uh, Chinese uh, internet shops basically. And so I reached out to Banggood and uh, yeah, I wanted to get a hold of one of those to see if they're suitable for retro gaming or for a test bench setup because they're nice and compact. Unfortunately, it only uh, worked for one day and then it died. So I'm getting a, a new model next month Basically, the good news is while it was working, um, yeah, it worked well. It is actually an IPS screen, so the viewing angles are terrific, really nice blacks. Um, it is a glossy monitor, which is a bit of a shame. I would have preferred a, a matte finish, especially in a test environment. The glossy shiny, shininess is not that uh, ideal, but on the other hand, the image is extremely crisp. Also, it has some really nice scaling options. For example, it has one-to-one well, -one pixel mapping, but it can also take higher resolutions, uh, 1600 by 1200, full HD, and it will scale it down. The native resolution is 1024 by 768. It has uh, HDMI, uh, HDMI port, a VGA port, and an uh, AV port, and a BNC port. The BNC port, you can just get an adapter for a second AV port. So four inputs. It also has speakers. Uh, there are, there are two, uh, it appears to be two speakers, but it's really only one uh, in mono, but it does play both channels, so that's fine. Comes with a re remote control as well. And you can power it through USB. So I used uh, the power bank we looked at earlier. It powered it up just fine. But unfortunately, I'm not sure if this is um, uh, a general uh, quality control issue with the monitor dying after one day, but we will have the uh, replacement unit uh, hopefully in a few weeks and there will definitely be a video review uh, because I can see a lot of you being interested in having a small uh, test monitor um, in, in, your, in your lab or in your setup um, because a large monitor takes up a lot of space and also the flexibility with all the resolutions that could be very interesting. It does support DOS, it does 320 by 200, it does the um, command prompt, the BIOS screen, all of that. So um, it supports all the resolutions and everything. It's just unfortunate that the monitor, monitor died after just using it for one day. And here we have two AMD processor coolers. So let's take a closer look. So this is another tip I got from a Twitter user. I'm not sure what the discussion was about, something to do with processor coolers, obviously. And he told me that you can get these on Amazon. They set you back 17 US dollars. Now I had to pay uh, shipping to Australia, of course, so it cost a little bit more, but uh, the two coolers, I believe it was 60 Australian dollars, including postage, and that's a fair price. And what this is, they are called the Near Silent 125 Watt AMD Thermal Solution. And these are basically the uh, Rafe coolers, but without the uh, that illum illuminated uh, shroud. Um, just as uh, potent in terms of cooling performance, just as uh, quiet, so not noisy at all, and retro friendly, supporting all the sockets from 754 all the way up to FM4. So yeah, basically, 
anything from AMD going back many, many years. So yeah, if you're looking for something for your retro PC that's not a tower cooler, and I do prefer these because they're a lot faster to install, um, have a look on Amazon. Uh, put a link down below in the description to that cooler, and maybe that's something that you find interesting. And we're almost at the end of the video. We just have a few PCI Express video cards. So let's have a look what we have. So the first card is an ATI Radeon. That's a X1600 XT with 256 megabytes of video memory. I've quickly tested it. It works. I've run uh, 3D Mark just to see um, if it properly works. In the past, I've been caught out with, yeah, just uh, putting in the card, uh, putting into Windows, and then declaring it uh, working. But then, when you actually run something uh, 3D, it will actually fail. So now I do at least run uh, one loop with 3D Mark just to see if it works. Um, not quite sure what to do with this card yet. I got it mostly because it was cheap. Um, I got some stuff from the US, and because the shipping is quite substantial, the more you order, the cheaper the uh, average uh, cost is. So I usually buy uh, a few items to make it worthwhile. The next three video cards, they all come from eBay Australia. A friendly viewer sent me an email with uh, some links, and he said, look, this seller has a few video cards up for grabs, and combined, it worked out to be a very fair price. So the first video card is an NVIDIA Quadro. The model number escapes me right now, but it's got the G86, uh, G84 GPU. So it's some variant of the GeForce 8600, just the workstation equivalent. Usually they're clocked a little bit lower than the GeForce equivalents, and under OpenGL they're also a little bit slower, but under Direct 3D they perform just as well. And um, yep, sometimes they've got better coolers or they're built a little bit better with better components or the GPU is spinned, can overclock further. So that's really the appeal for Quadro cards. And I have no particular <laughs> purpose for this card just yet. Uh, it's basically yeah, just adding it to the collection. And here we have an ATI Radeon card. This is a Sapphire X800 GT. And I don't have any cards from this series, and there are quite a few. There's the XL, XT, Pro, and maybe some others. And yeah, I just wanted to see how they stack up. I do know that the GT is not the full version. It's got a few features disabled, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a card that I uh, am missing in my collection, and I want, just wanted to see how it performs with other Radeon cards from that era, and also with the GeForce cards. And the last item we're looking at today is another video card, another Quadro. This is the FX1500 based on the G71 GPU. It's basically a, a version of the GeForce 7900, but uh, cut down so it doesn't have the full pipes. It's slower than the 7900 GS, I believe. But yeah, could be a nice little card for testing because it has um, two DVI outputs, doesn't need a PCI Express power pin, and yep, another item to add to the Quadro collection. And we've reached the end of the video. If there's anything that you found interesting and you got questions, leave them down below in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. And if you've seen something that I haven't done a video yet and you wanna see a certain aspect of it, also do let me know. It helps me structure my future videos. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.